schlotskis and then remembered I was giving this presentation, so hopefully I'll stay energetic. <laughs> We're talking about birds, everyone's favorite. Um, so I work for Houston Audubon, and I'm the Bird Friendly Communities Program Manager. And my colleague, Anna Valerie, is right there. Anna helps me. We, Houston Audubon has 17 sanctuaries in the upper Texas coast. Um, and Anna manages our two northern sanctuaries near Cleveland, Texas and helps with bird friendly communities and also manages our native plant nursery out of Edenville Moore Nature um, Sanctuary where we have over 60 species of native plants for restoration projects and for uh, the residential market. So anyway, I've never given this presentation before but it was kind of fun to put together um, and it highlights the uh, bird surveying and monitoring um, projects that Houston Audubon is involved with, but there are a lot of other efforts going on. So I'm going to cruise through these. Why monitor birds? Well, it is a part of our human nature that we want to categorize, monitor, and survey. We want to record and assess. Um, birds also help us, um, they're charismatic indicators of our environmental health. Um, and they can also be part, an important part of adaptive man management strategies. Many um, bird conservation organizations have gotten together to identify these key areas, um, these bird conservation regions. We are uh, Gulf Coast Prairie Area 37, and so with more localized partners, we focus on that um, area. We have a very special area here in Houston, and so it's great to work for Houston Audubon, um, being on the Central Flyway. Um, we have resident birds, migratory birds, breeding migratory birds, wintering migratory birds. We have birds that migrate from Central and South uh, uh, America going across the Gulf of Mexico and going around the Gulf of Mexico. We have um, approximately 500 regularly occurring bird species in our area um, that are specialists and generalists. So that is a lot to keep track of. We, uh, Houston Audubon, uh, hosts a variety of monthly urban bird surveys. So this is where groups get together um, with a leader and they do the same route um, over and over uh, once each month. Um, those records then go into eBird where um, Cornell and others can use them. Um, I did want to point out that um, here are some of them. We, we're adding to them. One of our goals right now is to get more urban bird across the entire city. Um, Marianne Boschman right here at the Nature Discovery Center, she leads our Willow Waterhole bird, monthly bird survey. Um, and we have one, you know, hog bird sanctuary within Memorial Park. Um, the Houston Arboretum is also within Memorial Park. Um, you can start to see that we're trying to spread the love on where these happen, both to collect the data but also to connect people to birds. So some of these are really people friendly. If you're um, a newer birder, you might want to join the Willow Waterhole one because we have such a wonderful leader, or the Fiorenza Park one where Marianne Weber um, leads. And um, you know, this is a good way to, to learn about birds and bird surveying. A second way we survey is um, Christmas bird count. Okay, this is a National Audubon initiative that um, covers a huge area, and I've just done a map of the circles that are closer into this urban environment. Um, there are two counts that I want to highlight that are our most central counts. One is brand new. It's like it's about to have its third year. Is that right, Kelly? Um, and it's the central Houston count, so that one where the bird is right there <laughs> covering um, Houston. And um, Kelly Andresik and Houston Parks and Rec, as well as Houston Audubon, help manage that one. Kelly is the official compiler. So we break up into small groups um, once in the winter, and we cover this area. We count all of those birds. We then compile all of that data, and then it is submitted to National Audubon that then produces a report covering the entire country. These are... Um, the types of the information we can get, you know, people ask us, well, how are the birds affected from the hurricane and things like that. Over the course of many years of monitoring birds, because there's so many different factors that affect bird populations, um, species diversity, you can start to see trends because we've been collecting this data for so long. So um, this is just a fun quiz. I always have to have quizzes in my presentation, the interactive piece. Um, so this, so when you are surveying birds, um, 
you don't, you can't always like stand there stationary and like slowly count each individual bird. Sometimes you have to estimate. So a fun activity is just to ask yourself right now, okay, these birds are flying by. You know, how many birds is it? So, you know, you can take your guess. What we recommend when you're estimating um, uh, your counts is you group. So, like, a, a group is like this, a group of 10. Well, what's a clump of like? And then you just multiply it out. So that's an easier way to count large number of birds. Um, so I think the right answer for this one, 150. We tend to, like my personal philosophy, and you'll find that birders have different personal philosophies, um, but is to tend toward the more conservative. Another uh, monitoring um, initiative that we have uh, with Yvonne is Swiss for Houston. So this is something where we monitor existing um, chimney swift roofs and um, nesting habitat. Um, and we have document those on a map. Uh, chimney swifts are species in decline, and so because swifts used to roost in snags and chimneys that we now cap and cut down the snags because we're afraid they're safety hazards, um, we are building chimney swift towers. So here's an example of a model of a chimney swift tower, and we then will be monitoring all these towers that go, go up throughout the city um, in partnership with Houston Parks and Rec, Texas Parks and Wildlife, Memorial Park Conservancy, Exploration Green. Um, us with this. We also offer a red vented bulbul census in partnership with Cleb Woods Nature Center. Uh, so uh, red vented bulbuls are uh, birds from in the India area and they um, are an invasive species here. And we are just beginning to, I think Dan Brooks at the Museum of Natural Science is doing some invasive the bird species monitoring um, kind of more uh, holistically. But we are starting to monitor these in the heights. So once a year, we have uh, teams that go out. They literally partner up in groups of two and three, and they walk the streets, these same routes that we've been establishing, and they count the number of red vented bulbuls. Um, we think Cleb Woods then collects that data, and you know, slowly over time, we're hoping that it'll show trends that may be helpful to how we manage this problematic species, honestly. Another kind of aside to this about birders, um, people love, or people are listers. Are any of y'all, do you consider yourself listers? Marianne, I know you're a lister, come on. Uh, you're a lister and a deep conservationist. But so people get excited about the, that an invasive species are here because they can add them to their list. Um, but I'm kind of like, I don't know, I'd much rather have our neighbors to have our native species a uh, more healthy environment. A really key piece of uh, bird surveying and monitoring is eBird. And can I see a show of hands of who currently uses eBird? So this is good. Okay, I'm glad to see a lot of hands. Manager of the Lab of Ornithology. And uh, it's a, it's a two-way street the way eBird works. So one, you are entering, all of us as citizen scientists are entering our bird observations into this program, and then Cornell can use it, um, and all of us can actually work with Cornell if we design certain studies, use it to see uh, trends. Uh, but also they've designed it so that individual birders can keep track of their life lists and can find out where you need species may be when they're traveling and things like that. So it's good for the science and good for the joy of birding. So I think, I hope this will work, but watch this little map when I plus, press play. If I can get it to, we'll see. There it is. Okay. So how does Cornell use some of this data? Well, so this is a tracking indigo bunting population. So this is people that have entered in where they've observed indigo buntings, and you start to see how they travel when they're going north to their nesting grounds. So they're nesting, and then they're going to start their fall migration coming back down south. We get really excited here about spring migration because the birds are more um, uh, dense. But fall migration is a great time to see migratory birds as well. They're just a little bit more spread out. 
But isn't that cool? These, as far as the heat maps, I think that they right now have these available for select species, but I think they could run them for any of them. And my understanding is that, um, you know, Cornell is open to, um, to projects. So if a organization was interested in, you know, working on a particular species or educating the public, Cornell may want to work with you. Um, so eBird also here, Sheldon Lake State Park, it looks like they've had species observed here. Um, you can click on details. You can see recent lists for the location. You, there's a printable checklist for every hot spot. So if you manage a uh, green uh, a park or something like that, make sure you're listed as a hot spot, and that way people can more easily see uh, the bird out there. And like we get a lot of um, people want to know what birds are on their sites that they're restoring. It's so easy. They think I'm being so helpful when I send them the list. But like, all I do is go to eBird and just print the list. Uh, we also offer a variety of interesting um, coastal surveys. This is a little less urban, but I thought at least I'd mention them to you. Um, our coastal bird survey, this was developed after the BP oil spill when we realized we did not have good data on our uh, coastal birds. So we initiated this. Um, with uh, American Bird Conservancy and other partners, we do a beach nesting bird program where we identify, for example, the least terns. Um, I understand they're having a good year this year. Uh, Gulf Sea Watch, where we watch uh, birds just, you know, while we're sitting on the beach. These are cool examples that I wish I knew more about, but at least wanted to let you know it's happening. So the plover has a little back monitor on it and this goes to a, um, a satellite so you can monitor from from this science we've been able to tell that these plovers are um, they're they're uh, showing site fidelity so we know that they come back to one of our sanctuaries year after year um, we're also able to see how they feed just locally like where they move around while it depends and then on the prothonotary warbler um, is a modus tracker so there's a series of towers that look like I don't like old school TV towers is what they look like to me, like antenna. Um, and so we are able to monitor when the bird comes within a certain distance of that tower. It, it pings, and so we're able to see where these migratory birds are traveling. The, the warblers are so small, they can't carry that backpack technology currently. This is a project we used to do and we don't anymore. And I wanted to mention it just in case anyone was interesting, interested in picking it back up. Project Prairie Bird, it um, assessed uh, wintering birds in the prairie. So someone, a leader, would walk, walk through the prairie. There would be a couple of observers on either side, and they would mark the species observed. Apparently, it was very challenging because the um, Baird sparrow, uh, Henslow sparrow, and grasshopper sparrow are extremely hard to identify. And so it was challenging, but I think it might be worthwhile picking it back up if, if there's interest. Um, because I've cruised through this stuff so quickly, please just make note that you can find out this information on our website. So particularly with the urban bird surveys and the um, Christmas bird counts, Houston Audubon uh, keeps track of all the Texas Christmas bird counts. So it's a, it's a hub for that information for all Christmas bird counts. Um, and then under conservation, you can read a little bit more about our coastal projects. And also, this isn't totally connected to bird monitoring, but I wanted you to know it existed. Um, for residential and larger habitat, bird-friendly habitat, we have some resources available. Um, so I would point out our bird-friendly habitat guide, the second one from the bottom on the Get Started bar. This is a 48-page guide that can help um, green spaces and developments be more bird-friendly. Our needs, um, you know, like Seattle did this cool project where they restored um, uh, green space and then they monitored the avian populations very much coinciding with the restoration efforts. So right now we do a lot of like we collect the data, we do less analysis of it. So I think we're going to need um, partners if we really want to 
analyze that or have, the, have a really neat study of a particular green space and how the avian populations are affected by the different habitat restoration um, strategies. Um, we also need more individuals. There's an individual I'm going to call out by name. She's not here, but her name is Wendy Wright. And she birds that riparian project at uh, White Oak Park almost every single day. She enters her data into eBird. She takes all amazing photo documentation of the birds. We are able to use that information pretty regularly on convincing people why the site is so significant. Um, when we do our monthly bird surveys, it's you know one morning once a month. Okay, she's going every day, so getting that real uh, seasonal sensitivity, um, she's able to pick that up as an individual. We need more Wendy Wrights. Um, we need urban bird survey coverage, more sites, and we need leadership. So we need people that are willing to volunteer 12 times a year to help us out by leading those. Um, and we need everyone to participate in the Christmas bird count. It's a really welcoming citizen science activity. Um, and then we will need more help with chimney swift monitoring, getting the towers up and then helping us make sure that the towers are being used or understanding how they're used. Um, and I think I was close to 15 minutes, maybe a couple minutes over. Uh, and I thought this was a nice quote, uh, like the resource it seeks to protect, wildlife conservation must be dynamic, changing as the conditions change, seeking always to become more effective. So thank you.